Hello everyone, thank you very much for tuning in to my YouTube channel. My name is Joss and today I would like to show you how to conduct mediation analysis using bootstrapping techniques. Often in the social sciences, researchers are interested in explicating the mechanism that underlies an observed relationship between an independent variable and a dependent variable. Essentially, mediation analysis is the appropriate statistical procedure to conduct in order to test for this hypothesis. So let me show you a little bit how it works, but before getting to the heart of it, I would like to show you where you can gain access to the files I'll be using in today's lecture. In the description of this video, there will be a link to my website, and you can click on statistical videos. That will give you access to three different files, namely mediation figure, which is a figure showing you the model I'll be testing, the write-up of the output I'll be describing today, and lastly, the Dreams Wellbeing Mediation Data File, which is in fact an Excel spreadsheet that you can easily convert to an SPSS document. The model that I will be testing today is the indirect effect of life satisfaction on quality of dreams through positive social interactions. To give you a bit of context, participants are randomly assigned to one of two conditions in which they are asked to write either about a time where they were satisfied or dissatisfied with their life. And then participants report how many positive social interactions they had during the day, and later that night, they report how well they slept. And the idea is that life satisfaction should increase people's positive social interactions, so that will be referred to as the aid path. Then positive social interactions are hypothesized to increase people's quality of dreams. That's the B path. Life satisfaction is um, hypothesized to augment a people's quality of dreams. That's the C path. However, when the mediator is included in the model, the C path becomes a C prime path. And here, the indirect effect that I'll be testing in the next section is essentially the A and the B path combined together. So this is the indirect effect. I'm currently in the SPSS and I've just opened my data file ready to run the mediation model that I've just explained. But before doing so, I would like to draw your attention to the three variables of interest here. Life satisfaction, positive social interaction, and dream quality. I would like you to notice that life satisfaction is indeed um, demi-coded with 0 and 1. This is because these two conditions are experimentally manipulated and therefore they're not a continuous variable. That being said, to run the, the analysis, it's fairly simple. One needs to click on Analyze, Regression, and Preacher and Ace 2008 Multiple Mediation Indirect. Now, presently, I'm uh, assuming that you've already installed the custom dialog. If you haven't done so, uh, look at my YouTube channel. There's a video that shows you how to do so. By clicking on this, I get this very simple window in which I have to implement my, my variable in the right boxes. Um, essentially, life satisfaction would be my independent variable, positive uh, social interaction, the mediator, and dream quality, of course, my dependent variable. In the bootstrapping uh, box, um, you have to select 5,000 samples. You can select more or less, but the literature suggests 5,000 samples. And also, please select the confidence interval at 95%. We're at this point where we're ready to run the model, but before doing so, I'd like to discuss with you the theoretical foundations of bootstrapping. Fortunately for us, bootstrapping has less to do with this than this gentleman over here, Dr. Bradley Efren, an American statistician best known for proposing the bootstrap resampling technique. That raises the question of what is bootstrapping? Well, essentially, bootstrapping is a class of computer-intensive statistical methods that uses resampling methods to generate empirical estimates of population distribution. So, in other words, the goal of bootstrapping is to provide accurate statistical estimates. The idea behind bootstrapping is to use the data of a sample as a surrogate population for the purpose of approximating a given estimate. Using sampling with replacement, we're, we're going to take samples of the sample and compute the estimate that we are interested in. By doing this over and over again, bootstrapping allows to evaluate the error of our estimates. Let's take an example. Assume we're interested in the average height of people worldwide. Of course, we don't have enough money, enough time to conduct such a crazy project. So instead, we sample only a tiny part of it and measure that. Assume the sample is of size n. That is, we measure the heights of n individual. From that single sample, only one value of the mean can be obtained. 
In order uh, to reason about the population, we need some sense of the variability of the mean that we have computed. The simplest bootstrap method involves taking the original data of n heights and using a computer, sampling from it uh, to form a new sample, which we're going to call bootstrap sample, that is also of size n. The bootstrap sample uh, is taken from the original sample using sampling with replacement, so it is not identical with the original real sample. This process is repeated a large number of times, typically like a thousand, five thousand, even ten thousand times. And for each of these bootstrap samples, we compute its mean. We now have a, some kind of histogram of bootstrap means, and that provides an estimate of the shape of the distribution of the mean from which we can answer questions about how much the mean varies. So now that we've covered the bootstrapping theory, we're back in the SPSS, we're about to run the mediation model that we've um, discussed. Let me just put the output here on the left hand side, right beside the figure right here. The output generated by the dialog is fairly easy to understand. Essentially, uh, if you look here, I have the results for the A path, the B path, C and C prime path. And these are all uh, unstandardized beta coefficient, which is very important to, uh, to notice. For the A path, so for the relationship between life satisfaction and positive social interactions, the coefficient is 0.95, which suggests that uh, you, one unit increase in life satisfaction results in a 0.95 increase in positive social interaction. The T value is 0.1742, and that's uh, significant because the P value is below 0.05. For the B path, right here, uh, the coefficient is 0.19. So again, a one unit increase in uh, positive social interactions leads to an increase of 0.19 uh, increase in quality of dreams. That also is significant. The C, uh, the C path, so remember the C path is the link between life satisfaction and quality of dreams without the mediator being in the model. The coefficient is 0.32, uh, very significant. I put in bracket here. Okay, that's the C path. What about the C prime? We see the C prime here is no longer significant. So that suggests that putting in the mediator, okay, reduces um, the significance of the C path, which suggests that this is a good mediator because now the C path is no longer significant. Uh, so that suggests that the mediator uh, is a fairly good uh, mediator here. So a good job at mediating the relationship between life satisfaction and quality of dreams. Now, to ensure that we have a mediation going on, an indirect effect that is significant, so an A, B path that is significant, we have to look at confidence intervals. Uh, the dialog will not generate any p-values, we have to look at a confidence interval. But before describing what the, what the confidence interval is, let me just draw your attention here to this section of the output. Uh, this is the bootstrap uh, results. We saw that the data uh, estimated the AB path, the indirect effect, to be 0.1866, and with um, the bootstrap that I just conducted, uh, the estimate was 1847. So very, very similar, uh, not a lot of bias in that case, but this is our most accurate estimate of the indirect effect. Now for the confidence interval, um, we have a lower and an upper bound. And to know whether the indirect effect is significant or not, one needs to think about whether the value zero is included in uh, the confidence interval. If the, if the value zero is included in the, uh, in the confidence interval, the indirect effect is not significant. But in that case here, we see that the lower bound is 0.03, which is above zero, which does not include zero, and upper value also it's positive. So this for this interval here does not include zero and we have um, certainty that our indirect effect is indeed significant. At this, at this value being negative 0.03 and the upper value being 0.33 again, now this confidence interval would have included zero and therefore the indirect effect would have been non-significant. In the next section I'm going to show you how to write up this output APA style for a manuscript. So we got interesting results, it's now time to write them up. Essentially, uh, on the left hand side, you have the output, on the right hand side, you have the, the write up that I've made. The first thing I wanna do is tell the reader about my A, B, C, and C prime path. Uh, that's the most important thing. 
So multiple regressions were uh, conducted to assess each component of the proposed mediation model. First, it was found that life satisfaction was positively associated with dream quality. Here I uh, wrote the B32, which is the coefficient for the C path right here. The T value, which is 449. I report also the P value. And here in parentheses for the T, uh, the T test, essentially I reported degrees of freedom. Note that uh, we had 208 participants but the degrees of freedom is n minus 2, so in that case, uh, 206. That's a common mistake uh, when people report the results. The degrees of freedom are not made properly. Then I'm going to explain the other path. So it was also found that life satisfaction, as opposed to no satisfaction, was positively related to positive social interactions. So that's my A path. A path, 0.95, that's the coefficient, the T value. Again, degrees of freedom stays the same, and the P value is below 0.05. Lastly, results indicated that the mediator uh, positive social interactions was positively associated with dream quality. So that's essentially uh, the B path, which is 0.19. So again, a unit increase in social interactions uh, increases by 0.19 dream quality. That's significant as well, 0.03. Okay. And lastly, I'm going to tell the reader that because the A and B path were significant, uh, I'm going to test for the indirect effect using bootstrapping methods. And also here I have a couple of references for you. I urge you to uh, look at those amazing references. Uh, Preacher and A's, McKinnon, those are experts in the field. And then I'm going to tell the reader that I use a confidence inter interval of 95% with 5,000 bootstrap resample. See, that's what's very common in the literature. And lastly, I'm going to report the results of that bootstrap method. And then I'm going to report the beta of the indirect effect, which is 0.18. This is here what we had earlier, 0 0.1847, okay? Uh, but I'm going to keep only two decimals. And the confidence interval, upper bound and lower bound, 0 0.02, 0 0.23. But notice here, that's interesting. So the lower bound is actually 0 0.03, so I'm going to change it. The reason why it changed is that every time you run a bootstrap, because of the resampling technique that's fairly random, uh, you might have different estimates from time to time. So if you were to rerun the analysis, even though you change nothing, just by having different samples, that might change your confidence interval slightly. It's nothing major usually. And lastly, because uh, the direct effect of life satisfaction on dream quality became non-significant, this suggests full mediation as opposed to partial mediation. And then I refer the reader to figure one that displays the results. And we're going to talk about figure one in the last uh, section. Now that we have a nice write-up of the results, we also need a neat figure to impress the reviewer in order to get published in a journal. I would strongly recommend that you use PowerPoint uh, in order to draw your figure, um, using good old boxes and arrows and making sure that all your coefficients are in the right place. Also, I would strongly recommend that you double check this here. People tend to confuse C prime and C path. Make sure that uh, the C prime path is outside the parenthesis and the C path is inside the parenthesis. Lastly, uh, please refer the reader to uh, this notation here to indicate uh, to the reader how strong um, or how significant are your betas. So for example, for a 0.95 coefficient, that was the value of 0 0.000, I put three stars um, in order to indicate the reader that it was very significant. For the 0.19 coefficient here, and the p-value was 0.03, so therefore there's only one, uh, one star to suggest it's below 0.05. And that's it, folks. That's how you would draw a figure for mediation analysis. Thank you very much for watching, and please do not hesitate to comment and ask any questions. I'll do my best to answer them all. Thank you very much. Have a nice day.